God, we just uh, come before you, Lord, and as we just saying about your spirit, Father of our spirits, Father God, we just uh, we thank you for the fact that you have uniquely given each of us who call upon your name your living spirit inside of us, each one of us, God. And so today, Lord, whatever words that I share today, may your spirit uniquely just shower them upon us in our own stage, wherever we're at, whether we're an infant or whether we're a grown adult in our spiritual development phase. Lord, let your spirit speak to us today so that we can hear and receive what it is that you have for us. And Lord, may I just be a mouthpiece, Lord. Just uh, whatever is true, let it just be sealed up in our hearts. Whatever is false, just let it fall by the wayside. But today, may your name be honored and glorified in everything that's said and done here today. And we just, God, we just give you all the glory here today. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, so we're closing out our series, Growing Pains Revisited. And we call it Revisited because we did this sermon series two or three years ago. And uh, it was a phenomenal series. And uh, we aren't, some of the slides are the same, but some of the information is the same. But it's such an important part of our spiritual development, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't not do it again. And, and, and COVID kind of wreaked havoc upon our spiritual lives, and so we thought this would be a great time to redo this uh, series this year um, when we were planning out the, the year. We didn't realize just how powerful and how important it might be when we planned it, but uh, it really has been a great series. So uh, when we do a series like this, it's really important that... Um, that you realize that we're building upon each series and each day, all right? So it's not like if you weren't here the last three weeks, you can't get anything out of today. But if there's something that doesn't quite make sense, I'd strongly encourage you to go back and listen to it because it, we're really just building upon what we've talked about thus far. And so even today, I'm using a lot of the messages, a lot of the sermon slides that Matt's already talked about through the series, but I'm looking at them from a different angle because today is really a heavy application day. All right, and so you might be like, well, Matt already talked about that. Yeah, from an entirely different angle. He set the foundation, and now I'm going to tell us, like, how does that actually impart itself into our lives? How does that look like? Uh, what does it look like manifested in our daily living? And so that's really what I'm going to be focusing on today as we go through here. So if at any point in time there's something that you don't quite understand, or I'm alluding to something that you're like, I don't know, uh, there's three other messages. Go back and listen to them because they're great. All right, so. I do believe that you will get something out of it today uh, because it, it is heavy application and it doesn't matter whether you've heard them or not. So the first thing I want to remind you of is our theme verse for this passage. And it comes out of the, of the book of Hebrews. And uh, I, I want us to know, uh, each one of us, though this is we're over 2,000 years later after the author of Hebrews wrote this, uh, we're in really good company when we get to the point where we get stuck or we stop growing, all right? Because you got to remember, the, the author of Hebrews wrote this to the first century church, the church that was birthed right after Jesus died, all right? So if they got it wrong, the chances are that we do too, so we're in good company. Now, it's not okay to stay there, but we'll get there in a minute. All right, so this is what he says to us. There is so much more we would like to say about this. This is us as a staff too, so you can just imagine Matt and I saying this. But it's difficult to explain, uh, especially since you're spiritually dull. <laughs> this isn't a compliment I, by the author. I mean, not Matt and I, like, we would say it differently. <laughs> and you don't seem to listen. Okay, it's, this is how I would say it. Matt would say it differently. All right, keep going. You have been believers so long now that you ought to be the one teaching others. But instead, you need someone to teach you again the basic things about God's Word. You are like babies <laughs> who need milk and you can't eat solid food. Well, tell us what you really think. For someone who lives on milk is still an infant and he doesn't know how to do what is right. Man, all right, keep going. Solid food is for those who are mature, who through, what's the word? Training. Say it again. All right, we're going to touch on that a lot today. Training, all right? Training. Who through training have the what? Skills. To do what? Recognize the difference. Oh, the difference between what? Right and wrong. Yeah. See, you guys know how to read. That's good. <laughs> there will be no problems from this point forward, all right? Keep going. I think that, no, that's it. So when we, do, when we understand this idea of understanding right and wrong and this idea of being able to know uh, the, the training that is necessary, what I challenge you to think about in this training part is when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness, he was tempted by Scripture. 
right? He was tempted by taking things out of context. The problem with American church, not just American church, church in general, is we don't even like to submit to God in black and white issues. And so when the devil starts throwing at us to take the scripture out of context, we don't even know what the scripture is. So it's really difficult for us to know what is right and wrong because we don't even submit to God in the black and white issues, right? And so this idea of training and discipline, it's moving us to maturity. But I don't want you to get depressed in light of this verse, all right? Because like I said, this has been going on in the church for 2,000 years. This is not unique to Western culture. This is not unique to the American church. So we don't need to get all alarmed. We don't need to get uh, all bent out of shape. We just have to understand that this is a problem Whenever we call upon the name of Jesus, our natural human tendency is to drift away from God, not to God, all right? And so when we look at our spiritual lives, we have to understand we are designed to grow, all right? In your spiritual lives, you are designed to grow spiritually. There's no option. Just like in life and any other thing, if you study any of science, and if it stops growing, it is dying. All right? That is the way it works. All right? the Utah is having a massive drought right now. All right? And if they don't get water, everything's going to die. Right? So things that aren't watered, things that aren't nurtured, they die. Right? So if we, don't, if we aren't growing spiritually, we're dying spiritually. So in the way that God has created this relationship with him, we are designed to grow spiritually. Now Matt has shared throughout the last three weeks uh, phenomenally, well, how we get stuck along the way. So if you weren't here for that, you got to go back. Why do I get stuck? What happens in my life? What are some of the things that cause us to get stuck? How do I get out of it? We're going to talk a little bit about how to get out of it today. Uh, but he even talked about what does the big C church look like and how should it look and, and why does the big C church look the way that it does look, all right? And you got to go back and listen to it because that, really, that was a really good one too. I, I, I love listening to that one too. So, But if you haven't been here uh, for the last three weeks, uh, you won't quite realize this, but if you have been, you will realize this. This morning, some of you are infants in the faith. Some of you are toddlers. Some of you are children. Some of you are teenagers. Some of you are young adults, and some of you are adults. Some of you don't even know Jesus yet, all right? And we're in that spectrum all along the way, all right? And so every stage, go ahead and go to the next slide here. Every stage that's uh, on this, and it's on your paper, but it doesn't quite look like this. This was last week's handout, the last three weeks handout. Every single stage is incredibly important to the church of God, all right, and God's church. So we can't bypass these stages, all right? Every single one of you is incredibly important to the body of Christ, and every stage is integral to our spiritual development. Every single one of them, they're, they're who and they're what make us up. All right, so as Matt's been talking about through the last days, I love this phrase, um, and it, it, it's, we just took it from something else, but we applied it to this one. It's okay to be where you are, but it's not okay to stay that way. All right, it's okay to be where you are. Whatever stage you're in, whatever stage of development, spiritual growth you're in, it's okay. But we can't stay there, all right? Because a, an adult who acts like a baby is annoying, right? And so <laughs> that's the same way with God. Like, he doesn't want a grown adult who's been a Christian for 40 years to still act like an infant in faith. But trust me, there are a lot of adults who have been saved for 40 years who act like infants in the faith. It's just what it is. Because we refuse to grow, we don't surrender. There's all kinds of different reasons. Go back and listen to why we get stuck. But we're not here to condemn you or guilt you for that. We just want you to understand, be honest with yourself and just identify where you're at. And there's a, there's a process that has to happen. If you want to grow, there's things that we have to do in order to make that happen. Why? Because we are designed to grow. All right, so the modern church, the modern church, and I won't even just say the Western church because, again, this has been going on a long time, but the modern church actually has been plagued by infancy and immaturity. And the reason why, I believe, one of the main reasons why, is we, we, have, we have fed the consumeristic mentality. And so, and I say we, meaning pastors, we have created a church to, to placate the consumer mindset. And so as soon as someone doesn't like what they want, they just go find another church. Well, you're not feeding me anymore. I don't know if you've ever said that or not. No judgment. If you tell us that you're, we aren't feeding you, look at the chart and determine who needs fed. All right, anyways. All right, so the whole goal 
is that you get to feed yourself. We want to grow you into healthy, mature adults. So that's what our challenge is today, is we're talking about how do you move from one stage to another? How do you make sure that you don't get stuck? How do we make sure that you go and, and you mature naturally through this process? So we're talking about developing a plan. We're talking about what does that look like today and how to make a practical implementation of that. Because here's what we know as well, right? Because this is what happens. This happens in life too. doesn't matter uh, what you're talking about or what type of growth you're talking about. But anything that is born and is healthy grows naturally, all right? Everything grows. You don't have to tell it to grow, okay? When it's first birthed, you, you can apply this to a plant. But healthy growth happens with a plan, all right? Healthy growth happens with a plan. And we're going to talk a lot about that a lot today. You will grow spiritually even if you never do a thing, all right? Why? And you will, you'll find out why in a second. But we want you to develop a plan because our goal is to grow mature, healthy disciples. That's the goal of the scriptures. That's the goal of Hebrews. If you read the book of Hebrews all the way to the end, the whole goal of God is that he wants followers of Christ to become mature believers in Christ. It's all about maturity. And so in that process, Matt went over the foundational principles, but I want us to look at these foundational principles a little bit differently today. Because every one of the, like, uh, I, I can't go back and repeat everything that Matt talked about, but I'm going to repeat a lot of them in a lot of the slides because we're going to look at them from an angle of how do I develop a plan in that process, all right? So go to the foundational principle number one, Okay. We all process the stages differently and at different speeds, okay? We all process the stages differently and at different speeds. No, nope, that's the second one. Go to the first one. Somewhere I know that missed the first one. I didn't think that was right. Should be, there it is. We cannot bypass any of the stages, all right? So as you go through the stages, as you, as you think through the plan, uh, a lot of people, especially those of you that are disciplined and you're eager and you just want to grow, um, the thought, erroneously, is that if I just develop a good enough plan, I can bypass being an infant. I go from infant to adult. No, you can't, all right? Now, with a good plan, you might grow faster than some, but you cannot bypass any one of these stages in your spiritual development. It's a part of the process. It's a part of how we develop even in, uh, in our lives. So a plan won't get you to bypass any of the stages that we're talking about today. It'll just help the stages that we're talking about today. Second one is this. Go. We all process the stages differently and at different speeds. Just like as you watch your children. If any of you are parents, you know that your children develop at different speeds. They might be the same age if you have, well, twins develop a little bit closer. Unless they're paternal twins, and then your daughter might grow a lot faster than the son. Why? Well, because it's this way that we process things, the way our bodies develop. It's the same way in our spiritual development. You may have gotten saved at the same time as your spouse, but one of you might have grown a whole lot faster than the other, all right? We don't compare ourselves to the way another person grows because the, the stages happen differently within our lives. We all grow differently. We all process these stages differently. Even with the plan in our lives, you might have developed the same plan as someone else, but the way that you process it, your life experiences, your choices, the way that you relate with God is going to be different than someone else's. And so your plan is going to look different than someone else's plan. And so we can't, we can't superimpose, well, Matt, you should go just like me. That would be such a boring world if everybody looked the same. And so that's not how this works. But the plan that you're going to imp, 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 make happen here soon is going to be your unique plan. And it'll help you grow in your relationship with God. But again, maturity is the goal. Not sameness as someone else, not forcing someone else to grow like you, not you looking like someone else or someone else looking like you. The goal is for each one of us to look like Christ. It's all about Jesus. It's all about us maturing in our faith and developing in our, in our walk with him. The third principle, when we look at this idea of creating a plan in our lives, is the spiritual stages of growth are not dependent upon your actual age. All right, so when you develop a plan, uh, if, if I've seen many teenagers that are actually far more mature than, than adults who got saved in their 40s. Why? Because they've, maybe they were raised in a church. They're naturally going to become more mature in their faith as they grow, all right? And sometimes teenagers are just a lot more passionate about following God than adults are, 
all right? And so they grow faster. And so I've seen it happen a thousand times. Maybe not a thousand, that's an exaggeration. I've seen it happen at least hundreds of times because I've been a pastor for 28 years, all right? You're, how old you are, I don't care because it doesn't matter how spiritually mature you are. How spiritually mature you are depends upon how you're growing in your faith with God. All right? So you're, this plan will help you grow. So remember that all along the way. This plan is going to help you go through each one of these foundational principles. So our goal today is pretty simple. Okay? This is our goal. Just want to lay it right out there. It's to challenge you to develop a personal plan. That's our goal today. So as you walk out those doors, I want you to develop a personal plan of action. Now, what that's going to look like, nobody can tell you what that is. That's going to be up to you. But here's what I want you to understand. In this process, there is something unique that's going to happen in your life. You are going to grow regardless of your intention or if you participate in our challenge here this morning. Now, it may be haphazard. It may be painful. It may be irresponsible. And it may even be slow. And others may even think you're not the brightest crayon in the box, but you're going to grow. All right? It will happen. How do I know that? Because the Holy Spirit, at the point of your conversion, the Holy Spirit was deposited in your life for that very purpose, to help you grow. And He is going to do the job whether you want Him to or not. Now, why we suggest a plan is because how painful or pleasant that process is depends upon your relationship with the Holy Spirit, all right? And having a plan of action to surrender to Him is going to go a lot better for you than if you just make the Holy Spirit do His job without your cooperation, all right? It's a true thing. And, and if, if, you, if you don't know this, number one, you haven't gotten to your teen years yet. Uh, if you aren't aware of this, then you're, or if you're experiencing this, then you're probably a teenager in your spiritual development, all right? The teen years are where we really challenge the authority of God. Our child and our teen years are, are where this really begins to become a battle. And so the Holy Spirit is designed to help you grow. So you will grow. So as a pastor, I know if someone, is like, aren't you worried about them? No, I'm concerned for them because they're going to make a lot of bad decisions. But I'm not worried about their eternal destination because I know that God is going, the Holy Spirit is going to work in their lives. I'm concerned about how painful that process is going to be. And they're probably, when, when someone's in that stage of life, they're not listening to anybody, all right? So the Holy Spirit's the only one that can get their attention. So it, it, I, I just want to warn you of this. If you're finding yourself there, all right, if you're in that stage and you're even here reluctantly, you're here to satisfy someone that invited you, I want to just remind you of how this process of, of without a plan looks like. It's important to understand I think, in my personal behavior, all right, that some of you may be like me, some of you may not be like me, but it's important to know what happens if you don't have a plan, all right? So go to Ephesians. This passage in uh, the Scriptures reminds me very much of uh, what not to do. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. You see, the Holy Spirit's job is to get you to heaven, and at the point of conversion, the Holy Spirit's role is to live inside of us until the day of death, all right? And I don't know if you know this or not, but you all are dying today, all right? You are one step closer to the grave today. Now, that might seem morbid, and the world around us is really against death right now, but the reality is this, we're all one step, and we only have one chance to do this. It's called life. And the Holy Spirit has been given to us that we might do it to the very best of His ability, not ours. And so if we grieve Him along the way, it makes our life miserable, all right? And He will do, the Holy Spirit will do whatever He has to, to get you to the day of redemption. That's His job. And the Holy Spirit wasn't upon the earth until Christ died and the veil was torn. The Holy Spirit was then imparted upon the world until the time that christ was dead there was no equal access to the holy spirit at the point of christ's death the spirit of the living god now lives inside of us the father of our spirit lives inside of us and it is his role to get us to the day of redemption and it's imperative that we understand that as we develop this plan 
All right, so when we talk about this idea of this plan, uh, uh, the, he- the book of Hebrews continues to go on and talks about what does this discipline, what does this, what does this plan of action look like? Because he, he, cha- he challenges us in Hebrews chapter 5, the foundation of our, of our whole series, but he answers it too. He tells us, like, how do we make sure that that doesn't happen? All right, so the, the, the author continues in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. I'm going to start right there. You could read all of Hebrews. And, and understand, when we're reading Hebrews, when the original author wrote it, he didn't stop along the way. Like, he wrote the whole book, all right? It wasn't like weeks, four weeks didn't transpire from chapter 5 till now. Like, they all got it at the same time, all right? And so it's important for us to understand what's going on in the book of Hebrews as he's challenging us to grow. My son, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. Don't lose heart when the Father of your spirit rebukes you. Keep going. Because the, Lord's, the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and he chastens everyone he accepts as his son. So endure hardship. Endure hardship as discipline. God is treating you as his children. So many times we just beg God to take the, way, the suffering away. Man, we gotta, that's a child's prayer. Children want all the pain, the suffering to be gone. Young adults, teenagers, infants, they just want the suffering to go. When you become an adult in your faith, you realize just how powerful that suffering is supposed to be in our formation and submission and in our journey with God because it creates a, a closeness with God that can't ever be replaced. Suffering is an imperative part of understanding the character and nature of God. And we have created a church that just if we just name it and claim it, God will take the suffering away. It's just the biggest bunch of bullcrap ever. Endure it as discipline. God never promised to take it away. He promised to walk with you through it. For what children are not disciplined by their father? Keep going. If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you're not even legitimate. You're not even true sons or daughters at all, and you don't even have the Holy Spirit. So if, if, you're not, if you're here today and you're like, I don't even believe in Jesus, all right? Well, then you don't have the Holy Spirit. You don't have, you don't have anything to worry about other than hell. But other than that, you don't have any of this. You don't have to worry about this message. You've got to worry about eternity, but not this message, all right? So I, and I say that in jest, but I really mean it like this message doesn't apply to you. I want you to int- be introduced to Jesus, and then you get to go through these stages. All right, keep going. Moreover, we have all had human fathers who disciplined us, and we respected them for it. Now, I realize that's not really the culture right now. We don't really respect discipline, but the intention was that we would all experience discipline at home. How much more should we submit to the Father of our spirits and live? The Holy Spirit, how much more should we submit to this plan of action, this discipline that the Holy Spirit is imparting to us? Keep going. They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best. But God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. That holiness that brings maturity into our lives, that reflects the glory of God. When we are mature, we, and as we, as we mature through this process, we reflect the glory of God. That's his whole goal, is he wants his children to reflect him. He wants us, he wants his church to be a reflection of the glory of God. But we all have to go through the stage. We don't just get there by snapping our fingers. Keep going. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but it seems painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Do you, do you see that? No discipline seems pleasant at the time. So whether it's imparted by God or whether it's given to us by our own plan, no discipline seems pleasant, but it's imperative. And it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace. So many people are not at peace internally right now. Everybody wants peace externally. That's a childlike prayer. I want us to move to the time where God gives us internal peace. He says, my keys to my kingdom I have given to you. One day he'll redeem the earth. When he comes again, the earth will be renewed. It's it's restored. The promises are in the Bible. But until that day, the earth is dying, and everything on it is. But not our spirits. Our spirits live on eternally. And he's given us the keys to make it live at peace while we're down here on this earth. So because of that, therefore, I love how how he ends this out. Therefore, suck it up, buttercup. 
No, that's not what he says. Strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Man, I love that passage right there. Strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. It just basically means there's going to be this discipline, this plan of action is going to be difficult. It's not going to be fun. It's not going to be, when if you've ever tried uh, to go change a, a lifestyle habit of yours, then you realize how difficult creating a plan of action is. I've had several friends that have quit smoking a hundred times. Why? Because quitting that first time is hard. I don't know if I have any friends that ever succeeded the first time they tried, but they tried again and again and again and again. Why? Because it's hard to develop a whole new plan of action. Now, some of them picked up new habits <laughs> that were equally as bad as their smoking habits, so, but they just changed. Why? Because it's, it's human behavior. It's hard to change our lifestyles. No discipline seems pleasant. This is difficult, and so we get that. But we have to develop a plan if we don't want this process to be more painful than necessary. Hear me on that. It doesn't remove the pain. It doesn't take away all the pain. It doesn't mean that you'll never be disciplined or chastised by our loving Father. It just means it's going to go a lot better for you. All right? Go back to the, go back to the sheet again. Let's, as you look at this, no, the, the stages of growth. When you look at this stage of growth, Every single one of these is maturing. Every single one of them is reflecting this idea of discipleship. Every single one of these stages, no matter where you find yourself, the plan of action, the plan to get through them is going to be the same. Now, how it's manifested or how it's acted out is going to look differently. But every single stage needs a plan of action to go through. And that's what we want to challenge you to do is to develop that plan so that you can move naturally with as little amount of pain as possible by submitting to the Father of your spirit so that you can live peacefully with him. So there's a, a phrase I want you to remember. Okay? A, discipled, a disciplined disciple equals a maturing disciple. A disciplined disciple equals a maturing disciple. All right? Now, there's a little catch-22 in that, but just remember that phrase. A disciplined disciple equals a maturing disciple. You got that one? Say it with me. Disciplined disciple equals maturing disciple. Okay, now let's go to the next slide. Discipline can be self-imposed or God-imparted, all right? Now, either way, a disciplined disciple is maturing. This is important because when we develop a plan... It's self-imposed. When we just live willy-nilly, it's God imparted. You got it? All right. We're trying to help you avoid the God imparted part, all right? As much as possible. God will truly still impart it. But there are things that we can avoid if we just submit to God. You see, because in the realm of our, our life, just think about this, parents, if you, as you've had kids. Obedient children experience less punishment, <laughs> right? It's just it's a no-brainer. Obedient disciples experience less punishment. But obedient disciples and obedient children still experience discipline. That's just how it works. So as a follower of Christ, I am a disciple of Christ. I am being disciplined. I am being matured. I am surrendering myself to him. And trust me, I've gone through all these stages. And I was not a good listener at times. All right? There's been a few woodshed experiences but if your life is not reflecting his glory, then you, you aren't quite mature yet. You see, the whole goal of our relationship with God is to reflect his glory. Matt and I do training, Cyprus training down in the DR in, in Haiti. You've heard us talk about it many times. But one of my favorite quotes that we say in this training is, his glory is greater than my story. His glory is greater than my story. When we think about this idea of becoming a disciple, it's about, am I reflecting his glory? while I'm down here on this earth? Do I have a plan to try and get to the point where my life is a closer reflection of his image to the world around us? Because as, as faulty as it is, and I think it is faulty because I'm a human and I'm, I'm, I'm faulting myself, God chose to use us to reflect him. All right, There are all kinds of issues with that, but it's still the plan he chose. So the church is the plan of transformation for the world. And it's through this process of us reflecting his glory. So as a follower of Christ, am I truly reflecting it or am I reflecting my own wishes? You see, the Bible talks about the fact that we are the potter, or he is the potter, we are the clay. 
do we allow ourselves to be molded and shaped by him? That's really a question only each one of us can answer. And so as Matt shared uh, last week, he, went to, he alluded to the disciplines and some spiritual disciplines. And so we're going to camp on this, all right? And so I want to I wanna just show you this uh, chart again that he showed last week, and it's uh, all the different spiritual disciplines that we can go through. So go ahead and go to the next slide. Our, dis- our spiritual disciplines are the key to maturing. Now, they aren't magic pills. They aren't going to magically just make you, again, go from stage one to stage 10. They're the key to healthy growth. Remember, as, a, as, a dis- as an individual, we're trying to grow in a healthy way. Just like in a child that grows, uh, if as parents, we hope that we help them eat a healthy plan, a healthy meal, right? Because if we don't, guess what they're going to do? They're still going to grow, but they're going to develop some very unhealthy eating habits, right? How many, no, don't raise your hand. Some of us are adults, and we've developed some unhealthy eating habits physically. Guess what? Spiritually, we've developed some unhealthy eating habits. And the only way to change an unhealthy eating habit physically or spiritually speaking, is to have a plan, is to have a discipline in place to be able to change that behavior. And so as a church, we want to help you in implement those spiritual disciplines. That's what they are. They're a plan, All right? So Bible reading and hearing. Do you read your Bible? I am amazed, still amazed. I've been doing this for 28 years. I'm still amazed at the number of people who say they follow Jesus Christ and they've never picked up their Bible and read it cover to cover. It's fascinating to me. How do you say you follow Jesus with your whole life and you don't even know what he says? You don't even know what the Bible says. All right? The beautiful thing is we can listen to it. I listen to it on my phone. I love listening to it. Someone made fun of me one time that I don't listen to music. Well, they make fun of me a lot because I don't listen to music. But I listen to my Bible all the time in my car. I love listening to my Bible. Why? Because it just, it just, I love listening to the Bible. I love reading the Bible. It's what feeds me. The Bible feeds me. I don't need anybody else preaching to me. I don't listen to podcasts. I don't listen to sermons. I don't watch TV sermons at all. I listen to the Bible. The Holy Spirit speaks to me. Now, I read a lot of books, all right? I read books. I don't listen to podcasts. I read books, all right? So I am getting fed in other areas. I don't think I've arrived. But I love reading the Bible. Do you? Biblical teaching. Do you listen to people who are preaching the Word and Or do you go by the scriptures where it says in the end times they're going to find their teachers that will tell them exactly what they want to hear? Gathering and worship. Do you know the book of Hebrews says, do not forsake the assembling together as some of you are in the habit of doing? (laughs) It's funny that this whole idea of discipline and and maturing, he even says that in there. If you don't know what that means, that was kind of King James English. It means some of you stop going to church because you can listen to Louis Giglio or Andy Stanley, and they're a lot better preacher than Pastor Matt or Pastor Don is, and they keep my attention a lot more, and I don't need to go to church. Yeah, you do. The Bible says so. Don't forsake the assembling together. Why? Because there's accountability. There's accountability that happens when we worship together. When we're off living ourselves in our own lives, you aren't part of the body. You're doing your own thing. Now that fits with certain stages of growth, but you know, prayer and fasting. I was a part of a pastor's conference before. Some of you probably heard my story on this. I went to a pastor's conference 20 years ago, and the, the speaker said, how many pastors in here uh, pray and fast? And I shot my arm up because I, te- I was pretty young, and I thought, oh, he wants to know. And I looked around, I'm like, ooh, I'm like one of the, I was like one of five out of a whole room full of pastors. And I felt very awkward because I raised my hand. Because I've been fasting since I was a kid, because my dad fasted. I thought everybody did. But the, the speaker went on and said, you want to know why the church in America is dying? He's like, because pastors aren't even praying and fasting. He's like, I go, he was an international world speaker. He said, when I go to other countries and I ask that same question, this was 20 years ago. He says, you want to know how many pastors in the room raise their hands there? He says, there's only f- three or four or five that aren't raising their hands. He said, that's why the church is alive in other countries. You want to know why maybe your spiritual growth is stagnant? Prayer and fasting. Do you have the discipline of praying and fasting and seeking God? Sabbath rest. We've talked about this many times. Divert daily, withdraw weekly, abandon annually. Are you purposely, intentionally trying to Sabbath? I'm a workaholic. Work six days a week, man. That's what the Bible says. God did it. It's good for man. Work six days a week. I don't have a problem with that. But you better take Sabbath. God even said, let the fields lay fallow for a year. 
The Sabbath wasn't created so that he could create a rule for us to follow. He did it because he knew we needed it. Meditation. Meditate upon the word of God day and night. Out of the mouth of God, every, the, for, the man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth forth out of the mouth of God. Do you meditate upon the word of God day and night? It doesn't mean that you have to sit there in a the circle and say, oh, thank you, Jesus. That's not what it's talking about, meditation. Meditation is letting the word of God go through your mind over and over again. When you wake up in the morning, when you go to bed at night, let the word of God permeate who you are, sharing your faith. You want to know one of the reasons why a lot of us don't share our faith is because it's not real to us. We don't even, it, there's nothing evidenced in our life, so we can't really share what hasn't happened. Why? Because we're stuck at probably some infancy or child, toddler form of faith, and we aren't really comfortable telling anybody about it yet because our lives don't reflect the glory of God. Stewardship. Ah, spiritual gifts. Do you want to know stewardship is one of the last things people are willing to let go of? Do you know that the Jews and the culture of the Jewish nature and in the, the Bible, that God mandated the amount of money that the average, the, the Jew was supposed to give if they were actually following the law was 30% of their income? If 10% was supposed to go directly to the church to pay for the pastors. That 10% is what the Levites lived off of. That, plain and simple, everybody thinks that's a tithe. No, that was just so the pastors could live. Right? Everything else there's an additional 20% that the Jewish culture is supposed to give to take care of everything else. You want to know what the average evangelical American gives? Yeah, you do. 1.5%. All right, leave it there. Spiritual gifts. Do you know what your spiritual gifts are? I don't know. If you go to growth track, you will. <laughs> All right. Are you living in them? Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to let your spiritual gifts come alive? Are you discipling and mentoring others? Now I realize that if you aren't at least to the the adult or young adult stage, it's going to be difficult to spiritually mentor and disciple people. But I've seen this process happen messily in teenagers that are passionate about leading others to Christ and discipling and mentoring each other. And it is a beautiful mess to watch happen. Um, it really is. I, was a, uh, I won't even go into all the stories, but it's fun to watch. God's okay with it. He loves it, watching them try and teach each other. It's beautiful. Ask Shin. He knows what I'm talking about. It's messy. All right, we're going to leave that up because we're going to camp out there until the end here. If you want to genuinely become a mature disciple of Christ, these things need to be evident in your life. They need to be manifesting themselves on a daily basis. If any one of those isn't evident in your life, then I'm going to challenge you, you're, you're, you probably stop growing. There's something in your life. You're like, I don't understand why I'm growing. I don't understand. I never feel like the Holy Spirit ever speaks to me. Um, there's probably something that's not happening in your life. These are all, you can find every single one of these disciplines multiple times throughout the scriptures. Okay? We, aren't, we aren't telling you to do something that isn't woven through the word of God. And these are the things that bring us maturity. And so these are the things that you develop a plan for and you surrender them to the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will work through each one of these. It is amazing. I can read a passage of scripture that I've read 20 times and I come to it the 21st time, and it's like the words leap off the page and permeate who I am. Why? Because the spirit of the living God is living inside of me, and he's speaking through his word, challenging me and growing me and maturing me. But he does the same for you. And so no matter what stage you're in, if you're an infant, or if you're a baby, or if you're a toddler, if you're a teenager, if you're a young adult, or an adult, each one of these each one of these things can become a part of your daily living if you purposely intend to do it. So we're going to do something a little bit differently today, okay? We're going to give you an opportunity to develop a plan, all right? So Donna and Shin are going to come up here, and they're going to play for us in a moment. Uh, but they're in your seat. You have a sheet of paper, all right? And there's blanks. And you are on that sheet somewhere in your spiritual stage of growth. If you need a pen, raise your hand. Pastor Randy and Pastor Matt are going to hand them out to you. So we're going to take about three or four minutes here, and you're going to develop a personal plan of action. You're going to look at the list up there on the screen behind me. And you're going to ask yourself, what are some of these things that aren't being manifested in my life? And if you don't have any of them, Please don't get discouraged. Start with one. Don't just go willy-nilly and say, I'm going to do them all. Okay, you're going to burn yourself out and then you'll do none. All right, that's what happens with most people who start exercise plans January 1st and then by January 2nd, they're done. All right, do one. Do one thing. Make a plan. I'm going to, you fill in the blank. 
If you haven't been here and you have not discovered which stage of growth you're at, then you need to go back and listen to Pastor Matt's messages to figure out what stage you're at. But there's some helps right there on that piece of paper. You could probably still figure most of it out there. But go back and listen to the message anyways and make sure that you properly chose the right one. But find yourself on that sheet of paper. Listen to the words and listen to the song and the music that are being played behind you. And take this moment that we have intentionally designed for you so that by the time you walk out that door, you have a very next step to take this morning, this day, this very day. In fact, we've even done something for you. If you don't even know what step to take, you're like, I don't even know. Well, guess what? We just sent you an email for Growth Track. You can intentionally take this time right now and register for Growth Track on Saturday. It's in your email on your phone right now. Nobody's going to judge you if you're writing on your phone because we'll just assume you're registering for Saturday. All right. So take this next three or four minutes. Pray about it. Let the Spirit of God, He's alive. He was our, he's moving right now. And develop your plan here as we listen to Don and Shin play. And then I'll come back up and close us out. Thank you, Don and Shin. I've been waiting for Shin to get up there and play that for a long time. As you sat there and you participated in this practice, I sincerely hope that you take this paper home with you and that you hold yourself accountable to whatever plan you have, all right? So I'll even share it with mine, all right? Because it's, it's your spiritual walk, we live in such secrecy 
that we don't let anybody in, and then we, we wonder why we struggle. It's like, because we weren't designed to do this alone. All right? I still struggle with Sabbathing weekly. This whole withdrawing weekly, that is my hardest one to implement in my life. All right? I know I have to do a better job of that. So I am going to intentionally really plan that out because if you don't put it into your schedule, trust me, life will take over your schedule. All right, I get that. Which one's yours? You don't have to tell me right now. But tell someone in your life. Hold each other accountable. Because it won't happen if you just write it down and then you throw it away on your way out the door. So like we said before, it doesn't matter where you're at in your stage of growth. It's okay. It's okay. Wherever you're at, it doesn't matter. No judgment. It's just not okay to stay there. Let's pray. Dear God, we just come before you right now. I thank you so much for this church, God. I thank you so much for every single person in this room, every person joining us online, every person that couldn't be here today. God, this is your church right here in Huntersville at Journey. This is one local expression of your body of Christ. And so God, right now, through the power of your Holy Spirit, seal up in their hearts what they have committed to today. No matter where, it is, where they're at on the spectrum, God, let them just take that very next step so that they can grow in their maturity in this process with you. Lord, we love you. We glorify your name. May our lives be a better reflection of who you are and all that you have for us, God. I just thank you and praise you for that, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.